speechless. This is, this, this is now number one. This has bumped every other campsite I've ever been at. This is stunning. If there's ever been a place that's provided me endless inspiration, it would be Alaska. Something about the towering snow-capped mountains, the vast and wild landscapes, the challenges, the rewards. This is a place you can rediscover yourself and push past boundaries you'd never thought possible while returning home a better person than the one you left as. Many of you may remember our travels here back in September of 2022. My mom, otherwise known as Camp Chef Mom, and I came here for the first time embracing a two-week adventure exploring this beautiful area. Now with the start of 2024, I have the opportunity and privilege of sharing my love of Alaska with my co-pilot in life, Shelby. For the next seven days, we'll experience firsthand the challenges winter can bring here in the far north. Though before we dive in, Let's catch you up on where we started. Welcome aboard, and thank you for choosing Delta. The help is... Our journey begins late evening on a traditional Seattle weather day. By flying into Anchorage, we save the time and resources it takes visiting Alaska by air, as opposed to the long drive from the lower 48. With our itinerary planned out and eagerly waiting to go, we came across one of the oddest flight delays I've yet to experience. That didn't work, so uh, we're going on to the next step. So uh, we'll keep you keep you posted, but we're going to be stuck here for the time being. So the next thing I'm looking at is the sensors, I guess, and. Uh, so we'll see how it goes. Apparently somebody forgot to empty the uh, holding tanks for the El Banos or restrooms at the back of the plane. Without checking the obvious, the maintenance teams and pilots did a complete unplug and plug back in to restart the plane. This included the engines, electrical, ventilation, and everything in hopes of clearing the air of the sensors. This unfortunately pushed our arrival out much further than anticipated and quite honestly provided a good laugh at the situation. Though after sitting at the gate for well over an hour, the issue was finally resolved and we were soon airborne. <laughs> Look at this. This is our new ride for <laughs> What's up, man? Dude, it is cold. It's tropical, man. What's Come on. Up? How are you doing, doing well. Hey. How are you? Look at this beast. Oh, wow. <laughs> She's like, oh, look at this overlander. And I'm like, no way. <laughs> <laughs> Just, you know, casual two in the morning and we've got a moose right here. <laughs> look at that. That's a big guy. That's Alaska. <laughs> That's, That's awesome. awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. Just hanging out. Yeah. Just no big deal. That's what you do. Welcome. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Needless to say, it felt incredible to be back in Alaska. A huge thank you goes to both Craig and Brooke, the owners of Alaska Overlander, for not only picking us up from the airport at 2 a.m., but letting us crash with them to get a jump start later that day. Though I'll be honest, the excitement was really to see Milo again. With the morning slipping away from us and still needing to hit the grocery store, it was time to get acquainted with our new home before setting out. Allow me to introduce you to Kodiak, a 2023 Toyota Tundra TRD off-road 
outfitted with all the bells and whistles, making travel any time of year very welcoming. The main showcase here is the Alucab Canopy Camper. This will serve as our retreat during the evening, not only for sleeping, but cooking small meals, offloading footage at night, and providing a general living space. From keeping gear management in check with the Goose Gear drawer systems, having plenty of room in the fridge thanks to the Dometic 95 liter, a Wabasto heating system that will keep us warm on those frigid Alaska nights, which, side note, can be controlled via Bluetooth so you don't have to get out of bed should you want to turn up or down the heat. There's also a Red Arc Red Vision system that powers numerous auxiliary items such as lighting, charging ports, an air compressor, and much more. On the outside, we have recovery gear in arm's reach. Well, if you're tall enough to grab it, that is. Powerful lighting for better visibility on the road and trails, and even a winch should situations call for it. I'll be the first to admit, this build is absolutely amazing and I can't wait to see how it will handle for our trip. Though so stay tuned as we'll be showcasing all these items in more detail later on. So fun? My <laughs> You want to have some fun? <laughs> we can bring your stick. Yeah, you can bring your stick. You want to bring your stick? <laughs> There's so much space. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's so big in here. We don't have enough stuff to fill got it. Got so much room for activities. <laughs> it's the best. We uh, did our walkthrough. We're loaded up. Grocery store camp. Mm -hmm. Ready? Yep. Let's do it. <laughs> I like this room. See, when you're small and you have this much space, it feels massive <laughs> compared to the Tacoma that I had before. This is this got nice. <laughs> Still love my Jeep though. All the people that are commenting <laughs> already. <laughs> this is just nice. It's a nice little escape at times. Yes. Feeling like we have a mansion on wheels, we were bound to load up on groceries for the trip. Now I'll be honest, we may have done some serious improvisation on meals for this one. With the chaos of schedules back home, prepping for our arrival here, we may have had an oversight on what we'd be making for dinner each day. So, in a relative frantic hurry to make camp before dark, we gathered some essentials of one pan wonders and called it good. With not knowing 100% for sure where we'd end up camping due to the heavy amount of snowfall, I wanted to have plenty of time for alternatives and with what happened next, I'm glad we did. Man, oh man, is it good to be back. This is awesome. Going to a spot that mom and I went to when we were here in fall of 22. And hopefully, I can show Shelby this particular spot because it's amazing. But with the snow, we'll, we'll see what we can get into. But either way, the mountains here are just absolutely incredible on this crystal clear day. Very clear. Love Very it. Beautiful. All right, so we've made it to the spot that I wanted to take Shelby here on the lake, and there is no lake. It's completely snowed and frozen over. And for those of you who saw our uh, series back in uh, September, a couple years ago, Camp Chef Mom and I, we came out here and camped right on this uh, point, right on the lake during fall. And the colors and everything was just so beautiful here. And I knew coming in the winter would be iffy if we could make it or not. And I walked down, I didn't bring the truck in yet to see and kind of scope out the very short little road in to get right on the lake. and. I don't know. <laughs> it's outfitted with everything you can imagine of all the suspension and tires and max tracks and winch and all that stuff, but we are by ourselves out here. And once I get right on the water's edge, the snow is just very soft. And even me with my very lightweight, I'm already sinking through just stepping on it. So can't imagine what a full size Tundra fully loaded is going to do. And it's even a very slight uphill getting back out. So even if we did get down, it's easy with gravity, but coming back up the next morning might be a challenge. So I'm not sure, I'm not sure. I don't want to wimp out, but man, I'd also 
don't want to put us behind tomorrow because we do have some big plans. Um, so, I don't know, this is tough. <laughs> Since we had already made the effort of getting here, we took a few minutes to stew on the decision while checking out this familiar scenery and the cold, wintry landscape. It's incredible how drastic places can look once the snow falls. So after taking it all in, we came to our decision. All right, let's see if I'm gonna regret this. <laughs> here we go. Even though it was a very short drive down to the lakeshore, I took all the precautions and measures before heading in, being that we were solo. This included airing down the tires for better float and traction on the snow, double checking no issues with the winch, and making sure I had the right key to unlock the max tracks, or more importantly, that the locks didn't freeze. So with all that out of the way, we headed in. So as I thought, snow is just really soft. And when we came down, we didn't push it, but I definitely felt the driver front sink in because of the weight. So I think what we're gonna do is max track forward so we can back up and reassess. While it may not look like much, heavy trucks and snow don't always mix especially coming down a hill, sinking the front tires. The key was knowing we were stuck and not continuing to spin the tires, which would only dig them deeper. In this situation, I always reach for the max tracks first. With a little effort and planning, you'd be amazed how well traction boards can work on getting you out of non-ideal situations. So as I predicted when I walked down earlier, it's soft. We got the Tundra stuck a little bit on the front. We're just max tracking right now. I think we're gonna just pull forward back up and realign with the hill to get out. So it's not more work in the morning, but yeah, nice way to keep warm here in this very cold evening in Alaska. Awesome day one here. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh no. I don't even know. So I think that is the sheer weight of the truck and cold just absolutely shattered those. Um, Craig, I will buy you a new set of Max Tracks. That's on me, man. Oh, wait. <laughs> Did you find it? No, I didn't find it. That's ice. All right, well, we'll dig all our stuff up. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's that's 100% on me. That is what not to do. Oh gosh, I'm so sorry, Craig. I will get you a new set. Oh man, we were in a tight bind. That it doesn't look like much, but it's like moon dust soft. So it's uh, you, it's very sinkable, which I thought was going to happen, but I also thought we could do it because look at this view. 
but instead of battling this in the morning when we have a very early start we're just going to go ahead and find a different spot after collecting our pieces of the single broken max track we decided to venture towards another area after seeing how fast the truck sank in the snow and not being able to drive far enough out towards level ground we moved on knowing an early morning awaited us. Regardless, I still see this as a great learning lesson and honored to be among the first for getting Kodiak stuck. we ended up finding camp just outside the town of Hope. While it was a little longer of an evening to get there, the difficulty was just finding places. With how much snow had fallen and how it was plowed along the roads, many side pull-offs were simply inaccessible or at least without the possibility of getting stuck again. So we played it safe with an area that was not only protected from the winds, but would be a great launching point for today. Today was all about activities. For myself, I packed the skis to check off a new place on the list. Though for Shelby, she went with more of a relaxing route. What are you doing today? I'm going to the spa. <laughs> going to the spa. <laughs> I'm gonna stay warm. <laughs> Since growing up, I've had a strong passion for skiing. Being able to visit Alaska and now combine my love of overlanding in this, I wouldn't have it any other way. And to top it off, both Craig and Brooke made some time in their schedule to rip on the hill with me, making for one of the most memorable days with epic views. Such a beautiful view. Oh my God. Look at that. Man, look at that. That's amazing. Look at that view. <laughs> Heck yeah. Awesome <laughs> stuff guys, that was great. <laughs> Love it. That was great. <laughs> what an absolutely incredible, incredible day two here. Doing some winter exploring in Alaska. Met up with Craig and Brooke of Alaska Overlander, they're the owners and uh, we were ripping around doing some skiing on Alieska and beautiful bluebird day, absolutely amazing. Uh, this trip is just off to a great start. So we're gonna pick up Shelby now from her spa treatment for today and uh, see where the rest of the day is gonna take us. There she is. Hi babe, how was your spa? With plenty of daylight left, we had our sights set for visiting the city of Whittier. This would be a first for me traveling here, though if there was any indication of the scenery ahead, the drive alone to the tunnel was absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. 
Taking the Portage Glacier Highway from Anchorage, you must travel through the two and a half mile long Anton Anderson Memorial Tunnel. This one lane tunnel travels in both directions at alternating times for both vehicles and trains. While there is a toll to drive it, it's honestly a unique experience you should do at least once, if only to say you drove the longest highway tunnel hey in North America. Good, how are you? It was incredible to witness firsthand the engineering efforts to construct the tunnel through the mountain. Watching the daylight fade away in the mirrors to only seeing the lights above and the other vehicles ahead was pretty unique. It wasn't until the very last stretch that we could see the tiniest glimpse of light at the other end of the tunnel. So we're in Whittier and we knew of a spot at the end of the road, kind of outside of town. Um, I don't think that's going to be doable. Uh, the road did say enter at your own risk and on top of that right before I think it hits a certain section, what is cleared is no longer and it's basically just completely snowed out and it looks even worse than, ooh, the wind's whipping too, <laughs> it looks even worse than uh, the spot on the lake yesterday so uh, we'll check out the town and uh, probably just see what plan B looks like for camp tonight it's a cold windy one Whew, time to get back in with the snow conditions and how deep everything was we unfortunately struck out camping here even nearby campgrounds were completely closed as alternatives so in an effort to still check things out we went back into town What I wasn't expecting was the seasonal closures for nearly every business and restaurant. Besides a local market and other small shops, there wasn't much to explore here in the winter months besides the limited scenery you can get to. While it was a little bit of a bummer, I'm glad we at least got a map on the way in knowing we can come back when things thaw out and open up again. Regardless, it was a fun experience even while being frozen from the wind chill. Ooh, <laughs> it is windy. <laughs> Oh man. Always doing it for the shot. Oh. Oh. What? Oh my gosh. Is it cold? <laughs> I should feel my hands right now. Your hands? <laughs> oh, burn. <laughs> Woo! Oh. Couldn't pass up an opportunity to go get on the dock. <laughs> Got a cool photo. <laughs> Knowing our camping options were pretty limited and not really feeling cooking dinner, we headed back to the same spot from last night in the town of Hope, knowing we'd at least have a place to sleep and a great restaurant to eat at. Good morning. It's a brisk negative eight degrees Fahrenheit outside and we're kicking off what is going to be an absolutely epic day. If you couldn't tell by now, we're not ones to sit around for too long. With limited time in our schedule here, we're making the most of it. And for this morning, we have plans to meet up with Craig and Brooke once again to witness the ceremonial start of the famous Iditarod sled dog race. If you're unfamiliar with the Iditarod, it's an annual long distance race held in Alaska starting from Anchorage to Nome covering 938 miles. Teams with 12 to 16 dogs compete in this race in some of the harshest winter conditions of blizzards, whiteouts, and gale force winds. The ceremonial start happens in Anchorage followed by the official start in the city of Willow the following day. With this annual race starting back in the 70s, there's an obvious reason why crowds from all over flock to witness this spectacular event. Though the key here for us was to follow Craig at 6'7", as he easily cleared the way for us smaller folks 
to get through the crowds. guys day three here in Alaska we're in Anchorage doing the uh, ceremonial start of the Iditarod and as you can see teams are coming by look at that super awesome fantastic experience and can't ask for a more perfect weather and day it's a little cold negative seven wind chill but <laughs> we're out here having a great time awesome awesome adventure here in Alaska great to be back as if the positive and happy vibes couldn't get any higher, we were soon following Craig for what would be the most memorable and unique camping experience I've personally had yet. For starters, we needed to get the tires aired down once again before setting out on the eh, more or less trail that awaited us. Milo, <laughs> we ready to go on the trail, bud? Are we ready? Are we ready? Ah. Hewitt, don't be scared, Milo. He's like, I'm cold. I need help. It's okay, bud. It's like, I'm cold. Come on, let's just go already. Now you might be asking yourself, how did we get so lucky to have the endless one-on-one -on -one time with Craig during this trip, especially on a trail like this? Besides just being an incredibly awesome guy to be around, <laughs> Craig wanted to showcase the finer parts of Alaska to us firsthand. However, we need to remember Kodiak is a rental vehicle, and because of that we wanted to apply the same principles to this rig as we do with our own, in essence, taking care of it as best as possible while still having a little fun. This trail navigates not only very overgrown Driver, and tight sections, but down. also crosses numerous river channels that at this time of the year are typically frozen, though not always a guarantee. Because of these factors and the risk involved getting here, we had the tremendous blessing of being escorted by Craig, who not only knew this area far better than we could, but was also semi-comfortable in allowing a full-size truck to navigate these trails from safely behind. It goes without saying, we certainly wouldn't have ventured here unless given approval by the powers that be. So if you find yourself up here exploring Alaska, just be sure to respect the trail and vehicle so those after you can enjoy it too. Now let's see if we can keep the branches away from Kodiak for the remaining way. It wasn't long before we were mostly clear from the wooded area and in open land. With being down to my last battery for the drone and camera, it was all I could do to keep everything running with how much footage was starting to collect. Though witnessing the scenery for this part of the trail, I think you guys will understand.
I'm speechless. This is <laughs> this this is now number one. This has bumped every other campsite I've ever been at. This is stunning. Thank you so much for taking us here. <laughs> oh my god. My pleasure. Wow. Now if this didn't top it off, we all piled into Craig's play rig to get a closer look at the glacier below and to quite literally drive on the frozen river. To say I was in awe of this scenery would be an understatement. Walking into an ice cave. Look at this. <laughs> oh, it's slippery. It. Gotta be careful. Look at this. And it goes all the way up. <laughs> How incredible is that? Unfortunately, we had to say goodbye to Craig for the evening. Without having a camping setup, or more importantly, a way to keep warm with the negative overnight temperatures that awaited us, we were on our own until morning. So with a quick setup of camp, Shelby and I huddled in the camper to thaw out and take in what was an incredible day. Bear me. <laughs> Oh, I got a beer. Beer. <laughs> beer. Beer. Boom. Here we go. What you got? Well, not a beer. Not a beer. Mixed berry lemonade. Yeah, I'm going to try that. So as a perfect example, this is where the Alu Cab Canopy Camper comes in clutch. Um, it's absolutely freezing outside. The wind is not helping at all, and we're starving. Craig just dropped us off on the glacier for this incredible camp. So to get a little snack in before sunset, we came inside the canopy camper. We got the Wabasto heater cranking up. And again, we can move the sleeping platform uh, up so we can stand in here. We got a little meat and cheese board going on, a couple drinks. This is living on a glacier, hanging out. We're warm, we're comfortable. This is probably the most epic camp I've ever probably have stayed at. This is absolutely incredible. Craig cannot thank you enough for leading the way out here. Beautiful. This right here is one of those priceless moments. This encompasses my passion and love for everything I do. Alaska, you have left me speechless. Be sure to join us for part two of our winter travels here in the far north. Though as always, I sincerely appreciate your support. And until next time, safe travels.